Hello YouTube family, James Green, short series shenanigans. Got my sweatband on. We are liking the the heat. So anyway, got our nice short haircut, getting ready to head out to the bash here in a couple of days. So we are back on. This is part number three of the Hey Man Can You Weld It Up Bro <laughs> making the shaft. So I've already got it set up. I didn't, you know. There's lots of videos out there on how to set up a rotary indexing table or a super space or whatever. Um, so we've got our six inch rotary table set up. Got a uh, chuck and this is just a temporary deal. Um, I don't like the way it is but I was kind of in a bind and so it's there, it works. Um, I'm going to redo after this, after I get back from the bash, this is kind of one of the things, of projects of, uh, you know, we're going to have to make it happen. So we've got set up, we got our height set up on our tailstock. I'll go ahead and move the camera over and show you what we got going on. I got fans blown, I got air conditioners running, I don't have the phase converter running yet, and like I said guys, that microphone is very, very sensitive. So. Things sound louder than they actually are. You know, people that have those GoPros and stuff like that, they have really crappy mics, so they don't pick up all the sound really well. That's why everyone has to use external mics and this and that and the other. So, because I have people that ask, um, you know, about it, and it's a Canon Viaxa. I have people ask all the time. I got it at Costco several years ago. I've been very pleased with it. So it's got a really, really sensitive microphone. It picks up everything in here. So let me go ahead. We're going to put our sweatband back on. We've been trying to stay hydrated. It has been very, very hot. 110 plus here last couple of days. Nice. Uh, we're staying out of the direct sun. Got the garage door cracked a little bit, so it's kind of light in here, so I can have airflow. And drinking the Gatorade. Do not get dehydrated. Speaking of the bash, it's coming up. I know it's going to be in the 90s, guys. For those of you that are going to be there, that are not used to the hot, dry air in the southwest, if you're coming from the northern climates where it might get into the 80s in your, in your, and it's, it's hot, that morning of the bash, make sure you eat a full meal. I'm not saying gorge yourself, but don't just eat a half a donut or a part of a bagel and then a part of a cup of coffee. It, you, you, you'll become a heat casualty. So if you already are or were a heat casualty in the past, guys, it's going to be hot. I'm going to have water out there. I know Stan's going to have water and Gatorades and stuff like that. Uh, hydrate, hydrate, have a good meal. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and move the camera over here. We'll just start talking about what we got. I'll show you what I have. I'll try not to flush things out, but I got to get the camera where I can, or the light where I can see stuff. Okay, we've already made one pass just to kind of make sure we had everything that, the way we want it and, and our depth and everything. So each of these grooves is approximately 100,000 depth of cut. Now, what I'm doing in here is I'm going to go in first with a uh, just a basic slot cutter. Like I'm going to do a keyway. Even though this isn't a square, it's got a bit of a taper on it but what I am going to do is I'm going to go back because I tried doing it to begin with and it wasn't cutting like I wanted it to because uh, this material is pretty hard um, I've already shaped my bit in my big fly cutter okay um, it was just beating it up so I thought well let me step back 10 yards and punt so we're going to come in here we're going to cut it this first because this has carbide tipped cut this and we come back and we're going to form our little you can see a little bit of a f angles and use this to create our, our form and our bevel so the ideally if you did this all the time you know you have the tooling that cuts this that's carbide and in a perfect world it would be great but I'm doing this manually and so let's go ahead and get all this tightened back down here actually we got the first one cut. Uh, we're doing divisions of 60, so we cut zero. Now we're going to, and I always like to write, just so in case you get distracted. I don't know if the camera is washing it out here or not. You can see where I've written 
there we go. You can see where I have written right here, just so I know if I have to stop, and then obviously the last one is 360, or actually not 360, 320, I'm sorry, see. It's been one of those days, so 320, there we go. So just do things like that to remind yourself, so if I have to stop, where was I, what's my next number? Now the numbers on my dividing head don't go from zero all the way around to 360, or, or not the dividing head on the rotary table. They actually go from zero up to 90, and they just go in increments of 90. It's an import, you know, that's how it's set up. So we went, around, we went around just to kind of verify, and we touched off on each one of them. Everything, the math works out, we've got it correct, and we're running flood coolant. I've got it set up here. We're going to move this back over. Actually, put that in there so I can see what I'm going on. I've got my flood coolant running already, and we're going to go ahead and rotate around to our next 60 degrees. Literally over here at 60. Lock in. And we are running at 80 RPM. Low, low, low. Oh, let's turn on our uh, rotary phase converter. That might help. So there we go. And I'm in back gear. Now I have my gear turned around because you always want to cut heading into what you're doing, okay? And I know that's not showing the, let me lock everything down, get you guys zoomed in here so you can see what's going on with everything. Can you guys be able to see a little bit right there to start off with? And then what I'll do is, actually, you know what? Let me move you over behind my left shoulder here. That'll be a better angle. You guys can see what's going on then. Might be a little noisier over here, but you'll be able to see what's, uh, what's happening. Actually, this is kind of a difficult spot here. I'm trying to get you guys a good angle. There we go. That'll work. That seems to work pretty good there. To where I'm not covering things up in the way. We'll move the coolant around this way. And that should work. There we go. Now you guys can see what's going on. All right. I'm going to come in here first. All right. Actually, I'm going to come up here and touch off. Okay, that's zero. All right, that's zero, and we need to go 100 thou. So, 10, 20, Okay, that's a hunter. Hunter cow depth of cut. Go ahead and get everything flowing. So it's cut 
button there. You guys have noticed the uh, mill is running a lot quieter. So I was able to find out that uh, in the head because I hadn't really had a chance to go through and clean and inspect in there. I got up in there with an air hose and blew out a bunch of garbage that was in there. And there was a little piece of a broken belt that was underneath the front and back gear section that helps you switch between front and back gear. Uh, it was really, really dry up there. Plus, I found the bearing retainer on the very top that sets the preload and all the bearings. I got about a quarter turn out of it, tightened it up. So that really tightened everything up. Uh, I did find out that the main belt up there is definitely bent. It was actually made crooked. It's got a little bit of a, a weird angle in it for some reason. So, actually, sitting here talking, not paying attention to what I got going on here. I'm like, man, why is that not cutting correctly? Because I rotate it. Yeah, that isn't cutting like it's supposed to. Tap that in. I forgot to tighten up my tailstock. I was like, man, why isn't it cutting that first part? Let's try this again. Because I noticed it wasn't cutting that first portion there. Oh, that ain't right. Because it was pushing it back. trying to shoot video instead of paying attention. Almost messed up. Double check our setup. Still good. Go ahead and let that feed in again, manual or automatically. And I got my stop set up over here already at the beginning. So yeah, that belt actually has a little bit of a, you know, it runs this way, but it's got a little bit of a bend in it. That bend is right before where they did their, uh, when they made the belt, where they did their brand stamp of the part number and everything in it, so. Now I've set this, so in case I have to come back, I didn't want to go too deep. Uh, when I do my forming cut, if I have to go a little bit deeper and take a light cut, that's fine. We're just easing through this. Like I said, it's kind of double work, but I tried to cut it to begin with with just a high-speed steel, and this material is so dang tough. Uh, what I figured out, it's pro it was an old hydraulic rod, you know, like in a cylinder, so it's some chrome rod. That stuff's pretty tough. Got a nice, good, steady feed rate, good flood coolant. Got my, uh, I do like what Keith did back here with the uh, metal. Keep it from splashing the coolant back, the coolant back there. And if I have to come back and go a little deeper, that's fine. Again, the gear that this thing fits into is uh, pretty big. You guys have seen it in the other videos. 
yeah, I'm going to get me a, a larger chuck, uh, or actually a better chuck, because you can't reverse the jaws on this. And it's going into that next step there. You're just always watching this, man. You don't want anything. You're so, you know, you put so much work into a part, you want to make sure it cuts. It's got a good feed rate. It's not chattering too bad. Good flood coolant. We're watching on the back side here. I'm gonna go ahead and manually feed the rest of this just because. Just let it right up to this here. smooth bottom. We'll take a depth measurement just to make sure we're doing our correct depth because of tool flex, tool pressure, all that. Let's get a quick measurement here. See how deep, and I know I've got a bit of a burr there, so, but this will get us an idea to make sure. we got to be a hundred thousandths. Thou. No, 80 thou. No. No, we're 95 thou. 95 thou, which is fine because we got to come back with our shaper tool anyway. We've got to come back with our. Let me turn this off. I didn't want to go too deep because. Even though this one here, it measures and things are kind of worn. Some spots it's 85, others it's 100. Um, I went 100 just to make sure it would clear again from how these surfaces lock and I put it back in the gear. And on some teeth, there's a little bit of a gap underneath. You've got your little grooves that are your relief grooves. And I've got to cut all that in. And it's going to be a lot of, you know, this whole thing is to make sure, because I've got a lot of time invested in this, uh, to make sure it's right. And I'm sure you guys that do this all day, every day, um, you know what I'm talking about. You're always wanting to make sure that it goes correctly. So... I don't want to cut a lot more on camera because you guys kind of get the gist of what I got going on here. Plus, I want to concentrate. See, I nearly messed up when I rotated. I forgot to tighten the tail stop. So, we're going to go ahead and keep plugging on with what we've got here. Uh, get all this done. And I'm going to do the shaping off camera again. All I'm going to be using is my fly cutting tool. And I'm going to use it because it's basically it's almost like a, a straight in and it's got a bit of an angle. I haven't measured the angle. I just went in there and ground my tool and I fit it into the old one, whatever that angle is. And uh, we'll come back and form cut those because it's easier to just trim edges than to try to take the whole cut because this stuff is hard. Like I said, it likes a fast cut on the lathe, deep, heavy, otherwise long, stringy, deadly chips. So we're gonna go back. Um, Keep plugging away with our, our process here. I think this will work. 
uh, for right now just doing it with this and uh, there you go so let's see if there's anything you guys have any questions about during this whole build and I'll, I'll bring you back later tonight uh, my buddy's gonna come over we'll put this gearbox back together which I've still got to weld up the collar and all that and I'll show you guys all that stuff so I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this series and uh, may have another one of these gearboxes to do here in the uh, near future after I get back from the bash so I hope you've enjoyed it thanks for watching my public email address eagledustoff37 at gmail.com if you guys have any questions hit me up send me an email eagledustoff37 at gmail.com Instagram and Twitter is at eagledustoff37 so thank you comments down at the bottom thumbs up thank you to all my new subscribers you guys and gals I look forward to seeing everybody out at the bash uh, this next uh, weekend so you guys have fun I'm looking forward to it get a vacation here and so until next time take care of yourself and take care of family and remember it's hot outside make sure you hydrate we'll talk to you later bye-bye